What is up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is very exciting because going along with this new series of breaking down the five undergraduate colleges at UC Berkeley, thus far we've talked about the College of Letters and Science and College of Chemistry, and so today we are going to be talking about the College of Engineering at UC Berkeley. If you're a student applying to colleges this cycle, you should definitely check out Study Hall College Consulting if you're looking for college application advice, college application essay review, and other general college advice. Definitely check out Study Hall College Consulting's website. So without further ado, let's talk with SWAD about everything College of Engineering. Awesome, so we are recording via Zoom. I am joined by my friend SWAD, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm SWAD. I am a senior at UC Berkeley, double majoring in EECS and BioE. EECS stands for Electrical Engineering and Computer Science love like you know spending time with my friends hanging out we we always do something like every weekend i like going to the gym listening to music uh i like to go rock climbing every now and then with some of my friends so you mentioned you are double majoring in bioengineering and eeks so in the college of engineering at uc berkeley they have the following majors aerospace engineering bioengineering civil engineering electrical engineering and computer science eeks energy engineering engineering math and statistics, engineering physics, environmental engineering science, industrial engineering and operations research, materials science and engineering, mechanical engineering, and nuclear engineering. So all of those engineering majors fall under the College of Engineering at Berkeley. Can you explain a little bit about your double major and how did you get interested in engineering? So in high school, I was definitely more on like the STEM side of things in terms of, you know, like I was better at math than I was at English. And so I had wanted to be a doctor at the time. And so I came into Berkeley uh, bioengineering and pre-med with the intention of going to med school. That's still like kind of up in the air, definitely like more down the line. But I came in bioengineering and I liked that major. And so um, after like a semester at Cal, some of my friends that were like older than me, they had told me that you know, you should think about CS because um, especially with BioE that's starting to integrate a lot of CS and in general, um, a lot of things in like industry and in the world are starting to incorporate CS into their products. And so they're like, you should check it out. So, so you know, I took a couple of CS classes and I really liked it. And so I decided that I would pick up the double in EECS. Um, this is, I guess, a little bit more niche, but for anyone that comes in in the College of Engineering, if they want to double major in EECS, um, this is unique to EECS, but I think there's similar policies for double, double majoring in other College of Engineering majors. Since you're already in the College of Engineering, it's actually really easy to pick up that major. All you have to do is take as many lower division classes for that major as you have semesters at Cal. So I declared the double major in EECS at the end of my freshman year, which meant that I had two semesters under my belt at Cal. So that meant I needed to take two lower division EECS courses. Um, my freshman fall semester, I didn't take any. So that meant that in the spring, I took two EECS courses. And then I was able to declare the double major at the end of my freshman year. And that's how I ended up as a double major in bio and EECS. That's super interesting. I'm sure a lot of high school students watching can definitely relate to finding some of their interests in high school. So for the College of Engineering at Berkeley, the application is very competitive. In the 2020-2021 application cycle, there were 15,881 freshman applicants into the College of Engineering, where 12.2% of those were admitted to Berkeley's College of Engineering. Can you talk a little bit about your application process and how you think you stood out in that process to get admitted to Berkeley's College? of engineering? I think a lot of the college application process is, uh, it's, it's really difficult to kind of pinpoint what helps you stand out and what doesn't. I think for my application myself, uh, I don't know if my Berkeley essays were as good as some of my other ones. I think my standardized test scores were pretty solid when I was submitting them to Berkeley, along with uh, my general grades in high school and some of like the AP courses that I had taken. Personally, I believe that what made me stand out um, and get into Berkeley was 
uh, science research. I think that in general, they look uh, pretty favorably upon that. And at my high school, the previous people that had gotten into Berkeley had also done science research and submitted to competitions. So I submitted to the Regeneron competition and I was a semifinalist for that. And um, when you are notified that you're a semifinalist, they also tell you that they emailed all the schools that like you apply to, um, that you were that. Uh, and I think it was like less than a month later, um, I got my acceptance for Berkeley. So it was earlier than usual for getting my acceptance from Berkeley. And I think that was definitely like triggered by the science research. So I think that that's what got me in. Um, kind of hard to say. It could be completely something completely different that I totally overlooked. Um, but yeah, I think that that's what allowed me to stand out. So with engineering and your classes at Berkeley, can you talk a little bit about the gender balance in your courses? Yeah, so this is something that I think Berkeley and engineering majors in general kind of struggle with. I don't know if it's as bad in the bioengineering department. I think there I probably see like 60, 40, 70, 30 majority guys. Uh, and so that like, you know, that one, that one makes me a little bit happier that there's at least some kind of gender balance. I think in each classes, it's pretty bad. Uh, you're looking at like 80, 20, 90, 10 um, majority guys in classes. And I don't know if it's unique to Berkeley. I think that that's kind of consistent across a lot of engineering majors. You know, I'm, I'm not a woman, so I can't really speak from that perspective. But some of my female identifying friends have mentioned that like, they feel like there are some resources that they can look towards for Berkeley and like at the very least the course staff treat people equally um, and so there isn't that much of an issue there but I will say that the gender balance in classes is something that like Berkeley and the College of Engineering kind of struggle with. Berkeley sort of has a stereotype of being very very difficult so for your engineering classes how much time do you have to put into studying and do you have enough free time to have a social life or are students studying 24 7 in engineering I don't think people are studying 24 7 and I think like people definitely have a social life the courses in the College of Engineering are harder than the courses in the rest of Berkeley um, and I think that's a lot of the time due to the very technical nature of them. But most likely, if you're in the College of Engineering, you're more interested in those kind of technical courses. And even if they do seem harder, like a lot of the time, it's stuff that's up your alley. The lower division classes, in my opinion, are harder than the upper division ones. So the lower division ones have a lot more people. And a lot of the time, the material itself is harder because you're kind of being thrown into it without having as much familiarity about taking college courses. But what's nice is that there's a lot of resources, um, and especially for certain majors in the College of Engineering, Berkeley makes sure to give them a lot of adequate funding so that, you know, if students need help, they can, they can go get it. In terms of like amount of time that I spend on my classes, excluding lecture, like just the time that I spend at home working on classes, it's probably like three to four hours a day, um, which is, I think that that kind of makes sense, you know, that aligns with in high school, you had to be at school for like seven hours. So like, I probably have like three to four hours of class a day and then three to four hours of studying a day. So in total, it's like, you know, average is about to seven hours of work a day. Um, and then outside of that, you know, that's time for me to like make sure that my apartment stays clean and I have food to eat, buying groceries, all that stuff. Uh, and then, you know, there's free time at night to hang out with my friends, do all that fun stuff. Okay, that's definitely good that you've been able to find a healthy work school life balance with your difficult classes and figuring out the time management there, which is definitely a big transition from high school. So for applicants, incoming College of Engineering students, what kind of skills or traits would make someone successful in the College of Engineering? I think one of the biggest things is being able to learn on your own. You know, I mentioned that Berkeley has resources for you and you can reach out if you need but it's a huge school you know there's a lot of people here and all of your classes are going to have a lot of people in them and so a lot of the time you can't get the attention that you used to get in high school in terms of that kind of one-on-one -on -one help um, and if you do it'll be for a short period of time before they move on to someone else lectures themselves like you know you can raise your hand and ask questions but the professor is trying to get through a certain amount of material and they usually schedule it pretty tight a lot of the time, I think what worked best for me was reading the notes and the textbook that they have. And I think Berkeley has a big like self-starter mentality in terms of like, you have to take the initiative for yourself to go and get things done. And I think being able to learn on your own is a really good skill to have. And I think, you know, along with that, all the other skills that you need just to succeed in general um, in professional situations, you know, time management skills, being organized, staying on top of your work. Not procrastinating is a huge one. I was able to get away with procrastinating in high school. You can't really get away with that in college, let alone College of Engineering, just like across the board, you gotta stop procrastinating once you get to college. 
but yeah, I think that learning on your own is the biggest one that I would highlight. But apart from that, like the general skills that, you know, help you succeed with school. You need to seek out and go and go to office hours, ask questions, find resources on your own, because nobody really is going to be handholding you. So with this, can you talk a little bit about how Berkeley, the Berkeley degree, how has this helped you find jobs and internships? It's been really helpful. Um, Berkeley has a lot of career fairs and um, companies love coming to those. And I don't know if the career fairs themselves are particularly useful, but what it highlights is that companies are really interested in Berkeley, you know, labs, industry, they're all very interested in people that have like a Berkeley degree because it shows that you're very much a qualified candidate. In terms of getting a job slash internship, that's where Berkeley is really helpful. You know, people will take notice of you because you have a Berkeley engineering degree or just a Berkeley degree in general. And when you're preparing for your interviews and the general recruiting process, like a lot of it is stuff that you've seen before in your classes. Um, and you can feel prepared when you go into an interview because you took an exam on this thing. So when someone asks you a question about it, like you got it in the back. In terms of once you have the job and internship and um, kind of doing well and thriving in those positions, again, Berkeley is really helpful. I can confidently say that some of the CS projects um, or projects in general that I've done at Berkeley are going to be harder than any project I will ever be given um, at working a nine to five job in industry for the rest of my life. Because these are things where they're like, all right, you have two weeks to build this massive system, go. And then you do that and you learn how to do that. Um, and it's something that you become familiar with where by the time I'm in senior year, if I get a project like that, I'm like, okay, I don't even need two weeks. I can do it in one. When you get to like professional jobs and internships, they give you a lot more assistance than you get in class. My classes are definitely harder than my job. And I'm definitely able to succeed in jobs and internships because of the rigorous coursework that Ber Berkeley puts you through. If you have a Berkeley engineering degree, you will have no difficulty finding a job and you will have no difficulty keeping your job because having a Berkeley engineering degree means that you are capable of doing these things. My last question for you, Swad, do you have any final advice for students who are maybe interested in engineering or Berkeley? I think that Berkeley is a really good school for engineering. You know, uh, we consistently get rated very highly and um, we have a really good program. The difference between Berkeley and a lot of other like highly rated programs is that Berkeley is a public school. And so that means that there's a lot of people here. And unlike private schools where you get a lot of assistance throughout the process, um, Berkeley doesn't really give that to you. That's a double-edged sword in that for some people that doesn't really work well and they would really benefit from that assistance. And you know they would much rather have someone helping them throughout the process. But a lot of other people thrive in this environment where it's like, it brings something out of you where you are like, I need to do this myself. And there's like this new drive and fire that you find from Berkeley motivating you all the time. And so that's something that I really enjoyed. And I think coming to Berkeley was absolutely the right decision for me. Um, it might not be the right decision for some other people, but I think for a lot of people, like this school really brings something out of you that pushes you to be the best version of yourself without anyone else telling you to do so. And it's just you saying, I want to be the best version of myself. Berkeley pushes you to succeed and want to succeed for yourself. But yeah, thank you, Swad, for hopping on today. That was all of my questions for you. If anyone watching has any questions, you can definitely leave a comment down below and we will answer your question in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you found it helpful. Definitely also give this video a big thumbs up to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Good luck with the UC application opening soon and we will see you all next time.